Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen my last video, I highly recommend it because it'll make a little bit more sense to why all of this is happening. But if you guys are new, I've been seeing a lot of subscribers coming in. So my name is Brad Bove. I work on cars for fun. I don't do it professionally. I just do it as a hobby. And I work with my friends and we basically just do kind of JDM-ish. That's not true. We kind of do anything and we just have fun with it. That's the whole point. We just have fun. And I just want to show you guys that it's possible to do stuff without a whole lot of experience and have good outcomes. I have help with people that do know more stuff like my buddy Harinder, he knows fiberglass and he knows, you know what? No, you have many more skills than that. But he's really good at fiberglass and bodywork. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, get up. Good. So last video, we laid down some fiberglass here and now it is dry and it looks really good. It's a little wavy there, but I'll get the trim back. Yeah, we need to trim this down to perfect size, but it looks really good there. And then this side was the side that we had to add a lot more just because it wasn't built up enough. So the reason we had to do this is because when the bumper fits on, this part was exposed, like right from there. No, but even, even before that, it's because I messed it up. Is that All what you're trying right, to get Even at? before that. Why? So, a, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like 240SX, like aftermarket bumpers, right, oh, under, yes. right underneath the center light, there's a gap about like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. No, like I'd say more. An inch, inch yeah. and a half? Probably not an inch and a half, but like an, an inch, say. Yeah. So what we did was like, um, obviously this is like being over dramatic, but the bumper sits like, comes from. It has a big wave to it. The bumper comes like this. So yeah. what we did was we took these two corners and brought them down a little more flat. So this, this part of the bumper gets sucked up. But uh, when we did that, it kind of messed up this whole flange that was initially here. Yeah, because so it was just, built up and yeah. it had a flange yeah, in. So, so we, basically we just had to remake so it. So we took that all down and then we just had to remake this piece. But then yesterday also, so yesterday we got rid of that side marker hole. So this is our first time taking it off. And basically we just put a piece of plastic behind, put fiberglass mixture in, and then put a piece of plastic on front, taped it up. And this is the outcome. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So now this whole cavity is basically filled. Yeah, you can kind of see his hand right through there, so it's not super thick, it's, but it doesn't need to be. It's probably about 3 16ths of an inch of just straight fiberglass and resin. Yeah. And then we'll grind this flush, put a, put a, put, probably put two layers of uh, fiberglass over top, and then blend it in. Yeah, same thing. All, this would all get grind, grinded off. Yeah, and also, right in this little corner, is a little bit of fiberglass there just because the way it sits you can tell it doesn't sit flush with the fender so we just kind of packed it in there so we can take it off that little blue tape protects it from sticking to the fender and only sticks to the bumper so as you guys can tell it is a work in progress but we are getting work done and also i didn't show it but the hood vent kind of started to peel up so we just resealed it and should be good now. The reason we had to uh, fix the bumper here a little bit was because uh, the fender is round here. Yep. And the bumper comes square. with a hard square. I'm sure it's designed to fit with there. Like I'm yeah. kind of mixing two different styles. That's what I like about what I'm doing. This is the Duraflex V-Speed front bumper, rear bumper, and side skirts. But then I have Rocket, like wide fenders in the back, wide fenders in the front. So I'm mixing just to get this look that I'm wanting, just the super wide. And when I say super wide, I mean like super wide from body. Like obviously you can get like 75 millimeter stuff, like that's super wide, but like this is still pretty wide. So what I've decided to do for this video is do like three or four days of work and just combine it all into one just because it's a whole bunch of body work. And I did see a whole bunch of comments saying you guys wanted to see lots of videos of body work, but like I personally don't want to film and edit multiple videos when I can just make one longer video and go more in depth of stuff. So where do you want to start? We have so much work to do. So we are hopefully getting this bad boy painted in the next week or two and I'm super excited. Bernard was just telling me on the way here that he is super excited to see how this thing turns out. I'm excited to see how it turns out. I'm not excited to be here for the next week and a half <laughs> covered in dust. It's the best way to be covered. You guys, comment below if Brad should get some three-piece wheels after getting a full paint job because that's usually not how 240s go. And if you are going that route, you need three-piece wheels. Yeah. 
comment below if you agree. Perinder's new thing is to say comment below, so if you guys hear that, that's just him being an idiot. So this is what I was talking about. This part didn't sit correctly under. You gotta come over my way a little more. So see, that looks a lot better because before you would just see the ground. Now, you just see fiberglass. And it tucks up all the way up against yeah, there. Yeah, that's the best part. That's the part I'm most happiest with, is it fits actually nice. Almost all people don't do this. Like realistically, it, like if it's like that. Yeah, and it's just garbage. Now tuck it up to how it should, right there. Like that gap is nice all the way across. And it'll look a lot better. It's, it's in the process right now. Exactly. We got a tarp over my car just because it's been raining so much. Got my bumpers out here and the side skirts just because we're making room. Because we got a paint booth set up and we're gonna be starting to spray on Robbie's car just so we kind of learn just because he is doing a white and over top of this white, it's like a different white but it'll just be easy so it's a good thing to learn how to paint on. But while I was at work the other day, Robbie set up this paint booth and it is massive. How big is it? Uh, 15 wide and or, yeah, 15 wide and like 20 and a half long. Yeah, so like that's perfect because you could have your car right here and you could have 15 wide. You have five feet around basically. The car's like six feet. Yeah. So you got loads of room. Yeah. You have more than enough. Exactly. So the way that we're going to do things, I just went out and bought saw horses and then we're going to paint the bumpers, the hood. I guess that's all you really have. I have bumper hood skirts. Yeah, I got but. bumpers, both bumpers, hood, and then like door latches and mirrors. And then my like shark antenna, which is nothing. Yeah. But um, we're it should be good to practice stuff. with the white because white is apparently it's the easiest color to lay. Yeah. Because it's hardest to see like imperfections in white. Yeah. Uh, and it's going over top of white, so when you open the door jams, there's just a different white, but it shouldn't bug anybody. Yeah. So we can kind of practice with the most basic form of this, and then hopefully when we get to your car, we'll be able to like kill it. Yeah, exactly. See the whole door jams and like at least have the idea down. Yeah. Right. Because if we're like really, if like say I can't get the hang of it, yeah. And we're painting my car and I just can't get the hang of it. Yeah. Then I'm gonna have regret problem. having to do the whole inside and every single seam. Like it's gonna be the worst. Exactly. So we're gonna start with the underside of my hood. Yeah. And just kind of hope for the best. So it's really good to have like a big paint booth because with my car, since I'm gonna be doing all the door jams and stuff, that means we gotta take off the door, like the back swing hatch, I think you call it. So we gotta take that off the hood, all the bumpers, the side skirts. We just need to have as much space as we can. So with the saw horses all spread out, we can just have like total room here and have the car outside because there's no point getting that much overspray on the car when you don't need the car to be in here. And then also we got some fans here so this one's gonna be blowing out and then it just has some like some garbage bag ducting which I'll show you guys later but it goes out the door and then this one is basically the intake for the whole unit. Also something that me and Robbie were seeing in comments is we're gonna get the floor completely wet like not like to the point where it's filling this but if you get the floor wet then it just collects all the overspray and dust on the ground so it doesn't like fly back up into the air and then also in my last video, you guys were saying you should not be using cardboard. So I went out and got a mixing board because I personally had no idea that you could not use cardboard for Bondo. Apparently it's like really bad. Like me and Robbie have been doing that since that the dawn of time. Yeah. yeah. Since I was born. Bondo cardboard. Yeah, or like exactly. whatever's lying on the floor. Yeah. So I got this. This should make it better. And then I got this stuff. This is just a like a wax cleaner, I think. I don't know. And then this stuff. This stuff's called gun wash, so you that's what you clean the gun with. And Harinder says, like Harinder uses this all day at work, and he says you can use it basically to clean anything. And then also, Robbie went and picked up this massive air tank, and this thing is huge. This thing should like do everything we need, ever. It better do everything we need. Yeah. I would pass if it doesn't. Yeah, like this is a massive upgrade from that little one that we were using before.
Who's a good Jerry? You're a good Jerry. What's up, brother? How you doing? He you just make, does like, this thing, eh? He just puts his head right there and he'll just be like, okay, pet me now. <laughs> you should make like a committee crew something for him. We like imagine a like collar. a little t-shirt or a collar. That'd be cool. Don't sneeze on me. So we still have tons of body work to do on my car, but right now we're just gonna work on Robbie's just because that's priority number one. Just to make sure that all the painting stuff works. But like, we still have the roof. All this stuff sat nice. Like I just have it outside covered in water because it's already fully dried. But there's still so much body work that needs to be done. But we're gonna get to it. We don't need to do it right now. I'd rather just help Robbie get his car going just because when his car's done, that means we can start mine. Also, I don't think I showed you guys. The other day, me and Robbie built a full rad support and like tube front end and the bash bar and it turned out really good it's like this looks really good like it turned out super well my welds are pretty good up there those ones not mine but the ones above are just need to point out the obvious Hi. this just shows that we can do nice welding and fabrication so when it comes to time to it like i could probably redo the tube front end in my car and i do want to build a bash bar at some point and like this looks really good this one robbie did 90 percent of it himself 95 percent jerry looks good. jerry jerry come here uh, we need a shop dog, dude. We <laughs> like, is this not nice? This is nice. Like, if we had our own Jerry, oh, you're just so cute. I just want to eat you up. Oh, he didn't like that. I touched his butt. <sighs> you breathe loudly. I like it. We managed. No poops on paint day. Sand it down the roof a little bit, but what we gotta do is just put a quick skim of Bondo on top and then use this stuff called Guide Coat and then it shows all the highs and lows just so I can fully get it leveled. But we're not gonna do that right now. What we are gonna do is we're gonna take the over fenders off, sand down all the edges. Like over here, you guys will be able to tell the edges aren't like super perfect, especially like there. So we're just gonna sand them and make them look good. And then we're gonna scotch bright the whole thing, kind of get them ready for paint. We gotta take them off when we paint, just because I wanna do paint underneath. And then for the finishing, we're gonna put them back over top, just so it kind of looks complete, because I hate to see it. Well, like, the, one of the key things, I, I think, you don't have to put this in the video if it's wrong, but if you paint it with the fenders on, if the fender ever shifts, when you, if you have to take it off, yeah, no, I'm, happens, I am painting and underneath. And you put it back on, then even if it shifts a little bit or something, the paint can flake. Yeah. So the paint has to come all the way down and then you put it on just for the finish so it looks exactly. like it's one. Yeah, because when I dipped my car, I had I dipped them with it off and you could easily tell, like maybe the spray pattern was slightly different and you could easily tell, especially because I'm doing like a pearl. So we're going to do a couple coats with them off just to just so you can never see any imperfections just in case it shifts like Robbie said but then we're gonna do the final couple coats with them on so when you do spray patterns it all looks the same choose your weapon so, whoa so right here yeah I'll take the little one the little one you can have you can have some compensation oh good one you're gonna spray Geico on this huh you're gonna spray Geico on this Geico like they're gonna insurance? give you a discount on insurance if you cover your car in Geico it's called guide Coat. I'm gonna spray my car with Geico. It's like green textured yeah. paint. <laughs> Lizard. Why are these so big? I don't know. God, come on, guy. Remember what you said about compensation? <laughs> <laughs> Drop a comment if you think that this uh, Robertson screw is just the jankiest thing and you know Brad really shouldn't work on cars anymore. Oh, oh shit, right skinny that? boy. Oh, look at that. No wide fenders? Wide fenders. I, I told you, it does look good. People just have problems seeing beauty in unfinished cars. That's why I, like, yeah. my steps were paint the car one color. Because when this thing was two colors forever, everybody was just like, it looks stupid. But, like, it was dope. It that was wasn't... the only thing they ever said. Yeah. Like, this, th your, your car is very nice. It just doesn't look nice yet. Yeah. I have something fun that we can do. What? You want to try and get my duck bill on? Because one of the biggest problems is we have to cut the over fenders. So you may as well cut them before you sand them. Yeah. And then sand what we do. The way that the duckbill sits is it takes up like that much area. How are you mounting it? I haven't figured that part out. Is because it coming I'm, off or no? I don't know like, yet. Are you like gluing it on? So I think it's I might, seamless? I think or? I might 
Well, I don't know. I really don't know. Where are you putting your third brake light? We're is not using a third brake light. What I might do in the future is I've seen a lot of people take something, like you take this weird seal off or something, I don't know, but then you put LEDs. And Across it, that's, the whole window? Like up there. And then that's how you have to have it when you're in like Formula One drifting. You have to be able to see it through all the smoke. It looks cool. I can't picture it, so it looks bad to me. I was gonna say we should do is like the Audi type thing. Or Audi, ooh, I'm gonna get Audi. super shocked Audi. that. Um, where you just buy like an LED strip on Amazon yeah. and run it right where the top of your glass would be. Yeah. And then when you hit the brake light, the whole roof lights up. Like just a straight line across the top. Yeah. I've never seen this. Now you have to show me a photo. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's something that we can figure out later, right? What I think we should do is like really center it. Like hey. we'll find halfway on this. What's the place called where we got this stuff? Duraflex. It's garbage. You can just put me shaking my head in the video. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very center. There's that much showing there. That much showing there. You know what? I'm gonna go grab a Sharpie and mark this. I'm sorry that I'm eating in the video. I'm just really hungry today because I'm not having a good day. I'm just eating to fill the void. <laughs> that was the most depressing thing I've ever said. Okay, so now I guess we can just pull this off. Okay, so that's how much we got to trim. I guess we're losing a bolt hole. Whatever. Okay, so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna get your grinder. You're gonna come in here, 150 degree angle. You're just gonna go. That's Ideally. Not what we're gonna do. <laughs> the wind picked it up and <laughs> swung it, and the wind went right in my face. Of all the places that could have gone. You want to test one before we break yeah, two? Yeah, let's test one. So we want that one like that. Is you're just going to take this when you're sanding. Yep. You're going to round this edge yep. so that it looks like this. Okay. Right? That's yeah. nice. And then it's going to round up here. Yep. And then you're going to you're gonna just kind of groove that too so that it doesn't yeah. go underneath. The whole thing's going to miss. Yeah. If the whole thing misses, it'll always it'll look more per yeah. like proper. Yeah. Just round out the whole thing. All right. You totally broke that right in half, man. That was so cool. Oh, okay, so what we said about two minutes ago before we realized the camera wasn't filming is that uh, this one's cut a little short. This one's cut a little big. We're gonna have to sand this one and do nothing to this one to make them the same. There you go. That's what happens when you forget to record. You gotta repeat yourself. You passed me the camera not recording, so that's yeah. your fault. What, what am I, a YouTuber or something? Like, I don't know how to work a camera. <laughs> I think that looks good. Like I think that looks like the most proper yeah. way you're gonna get it because it's such a nice curve. Yeah. And like this is, it's not perfectly round, but I don't think it would be. And you could even block it more. If you yeah, want. you. I just did it roughly. Yeah. But and then down here, I tried to do the same thing where I just kind of angled it. Yeah. It just like to I'm me. Bevel the edges. Too yeah. When there's no, when there's no, uh, like white and tape here and black sharpie there. Yeah. Like when this is all one color that will look like it's a cut. Exactly. All we have to do on the side is just pretty much Dremel and tidy. Yeah. You needed to come up here a bit. Like, look at that. Those are like three of the nicest corners you have now. Yeah, that looks And good. it takes like no effort. Yeah. The people that don't do this kind of like this little maintenance-y stuff. My goal for this car is to like really be good. I want it to be like show car to my best ability. Yeah, that's like, yeah. It's like what we did with the BRZ. Like we yeah. can't be perfect, no. but we want it to be the best we can. Exactly. Like this, yeah, that's imperfections. Genesis, yeah. imperfections. BRZ yeah. like has to be the best. Yeah. 
And that's what you're doing with it. You're going to make the best out of what you have. Is it exactly. going to be perfect? No, because look what you fucking started with. But is yeah. it going to be better than what you started with? Absolutely. Yeah, what I started with is just garbage. And I really think I've done a good job with this. So now we got those corners and those corners to line up. The only thing that is different is I beveled the ends, so I'm just gonna do that on that side. Now we gotta figure out how we're gonna get it to this. So are we gonna 3M stick tape it? I would. Just because then you can take it off one day, you can yeah. paint it separately, your car can be this color, and you can remove this. If one yeah. day you get like a dumb hatch mount, or I guess chassis. this chip chassis mount, you don't really have hatch to mount to. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything yet. I would fill all these holes, get I this guess... all painted, and you just need to mount this when you're done. Yeah. This is like, you don't need to put this on anything now. Yeah, exactly. We mounted this up, this is good. You need to take this. This is Duraflex, right? Yeah. Yeah. You need to take sandpaper and just do this. Yeah. And make this round. So now that we got this done, we just need to make all these edges nice and then start to scotch bright it. Okay, so you just want to take one side and do the other? Do you have scotch bright pads? Yeah. Okay. I have one. We can just cut it in half. <laughs> both feel like we've done 99% of it. It would be nice just to get it on like a table, but we don't really have any in use right now just because yeah. we want to keep them as clean as possible. That's a shitty thing. Exactly. So once you're done painting, we can get these on like a table, sit them down and really like look at them perfectly. 100%. But it's 99.999% well, It's the there. laying it down here. Yeah. No matter what we do, we're always going to be chipping or not yeah. chipping, but like just Messing scratching up. a little bit somewhere else. Exactly. So we can only do so much out here. Once my car is painted, We'll be allowed to make a mess again. Yeah. Hopefully that's sooner than later. Exactly, yeah. And then we can get this going. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna be filming for today. We got a whole lot of stuff that we're gonna be doing tomorrow, hopefully, if we can figure out this air compressor situation. But either way, like my car still needs so much work. But Herinder will be with me tomorrow just because he has work right in the morning. He's gonna come out here after, but his car still isn't working. But we will be working on my car. We'll be doing some sanding, more fiberglass, just all the good stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you, and I'll see you later.